Hey guys, so uh, just got a quick first impressions video of the new Hick Micro, what are they called again? RQ50Ls. So they're a thermal night vision fusion binocular. They've also got a standard optical demo channel. Pretty feature packed and yeah, I've had these on loan for the last couple of nights, taken them out a few times in the field, give them a bit of a quick test. Yeah, give my thoughts and opinions on them. First up, full disclosure, we're not affiliated with Hick Micro at all. We're not getting paid for this. I'm not selling optics, so I gain nothing if you do or don't buy them. Just thought people should be aware of that instead of watching a video from a optics wholesaler or someone who is affiliated with the brand and just telling you, you should definitely go buy them because then they're getting some sort of kickback. So make of that what you will, but I'm gonna be brutally honest and Tell you exactly what I think. So I'll skip you out. Uh, 270. Yeah, okay, the night vision sort of struggles out that far. So, as far as the unit goes, it's definitely got a larger form factor. It's a bit on the weighty side, but it is manageable. Run it off the lanyard, you do start to notice on your neck it would be a lot better on a harness or yeah, some sort of um, binocular pouch system. But because it is a larger unit, you're going to struggle to find something that fits these well. You're probably going to be buying a different pouch and either modifying it or unless companies start making something scaled up designed specifically for these, you are going to struggle to get something that fits them well. Yeah, like even then, like I go to the night vision mode, you can get like a faint glimpse of the eye shine. The button lay on it is very easy to access for your main control buttons there. Very intuitive layout, easy to use. I didn't read any of the instruction manuals, I just, you know, run quite a few thermal units and managed to fumble my way through it and figure it out. The focus knob, I don't particularly like the positioning of that. It's sort of a little bit awkward to reach. You've got to change your hand position. And not the biggest fan, but it does work. The eyepieces, they've got interpupillary adjustment. So you can, if you've got a skinny face or a fat face, narrow or wider, make them so you can see. On the front, we've got a lens cap for the thermal lens. Then we've got the optical lens there. The I believe that's the illuminator and then that there's your laser range finder. So it is a laser, laser range finding unit as well. The unit runs off three 18650 batteries. They, it is good because they're just a standard battery cell. You can buy them cheap as chips, but the downside is they're pretty fumbly and difficult to change out in the field. There's also no onboard battery, so when she goes down, you've got to pull that out, swap your batteries over, all three of them, not drop them in the grass. Fours and against for that, but make of it what you will. Uh, this test unit's actually missing the O-ring there, so this should be a lot stiffer, but yeah, at the moment it's very easy to knock that out, but when they're sold to you, they don't come like that. Uh, yeah. That one, you can see the range finder thing on? Yeah, okay, he's 50 metres. What? Yep. Shot. Okay, so there's another one down to the right of him. Um, you may not have the height where you are there. Yeah, a bit further right. A bit more. And I'll go to... Uh, so up a bit. Yeah, you should be able to just start to see the eye shine there. Shot. does have a tripod spigot on the bottom so if you want to get some decent footage through it ideally you're going to mount on that or if you're doing a long glassing session it's obviously the way to go so as far as image quality is concerned it's a 640 by 512 thermal sensor 20 millikelvin and it's a 1440 resolution optical channel one of the biggest downfalls I actually found with the unit being only 25 frame rates it really is a jarring and jittery image especially when you're going from other comparable thermal units that are all 60 frames. So 
using this from a vehicle's very borderline like you you know you're still going to see the hot spots but it's not smooth it's not easy to tell exactly what you're looking at until you stop moving so from a hunting from a stand or a sit and wait position or fox whistling it's a lot more usable but trying to scan on the move or from a vehicle is yeah difficult to say the least nice shot Another big negative that I've found with it, the optical channel on it actually isn't focusable. So the focus wheel only changes the thermal channel. So when I first heard about these, one of the things I was excited to try with them, you know, if you've got a curled up Fox, you can see there's a hot spot there. I was thinking change it over to night vision mode or fusion mode and be able to tell exactly what you're looking at. But because you can't focus that optical channel down in closer or out further it's sort of i believe set at around 125 meters is the actual focal point it's i find it pretty limiting in use another thing i didn't like about the night vision channel uh is the ir illuminator is included with it while it's decently powerful it's not focusable so you can get a lot of ir blowout so if you've got something in close where it's some brush or some grass that will overpower your ir image and then you can't make out anything out further or in closer vice versa i did find that a bit limiting i'd like to see a focusable optical channel for that lens and a focusable illuminator and that would absolutely bump up the versatility of this unit the thermal definition was really good so seeing rabbits and foxes out further plenty easy enough with this it is a high base magnification unit so it's 3.4 power it's great for spotting things out further and observing them does make it a bit hard to scan because it narrows your field of view down. But again, the application I'm using it for is not really what this unit's intended for, so bear that in mind. Another thing I found a little bit strange about the setup of it was the thermal fusion mode you can only use in infrared, you can't use it with the day optical channel. So for that, the, the image looks far more like thermal than it does for night vision. So generally when I'm thinking of night vision fusion with thermal, I'm thinking of a uh, PVS 14 style unit with a projector clip on. Um, you know, something like that where you can get a thermal outline or a thermal only overlay and then you've got a night vision image. Whereas with this, you basically got a thermal image and unless you're looking through the likes of glass or very odd circumstances where you might get a little bit more texture on say grass or bark, it's about as much you can tell with the thermal overlay. One thing I did like about it, hunting with me mate Luke who's running night vision on his rifle i could have this in the thermal fusion mode still keep the thermal image and know where bouts rabbits or foxes were and i could see where the illuminator on his unit was pointed and i could walk him in on target <laughs> sure. worked really well for that yeah i would have really liked to have seen the thermal fusion mode available for the optic optical channel as well it would make it a lot more useful for search and rescue type applications Another thing I found quite jarring while using it was the zoom function. So most of the thermal units I've ever used, when you hit your zoom button, it's going straight to the next zoom. It's not uh, smooth zooming in. This takes about one second to jump from the current zoom you're on to the next one. If you accidentally hit the button, you've then got to cycle through all of them. So instead of hitting three or four clicks rapidly to get back to the base magnification, you've got to sit there for about five, six seconds cycle through them and then you're back to where you started another thing i didn't like was the power up time is thereabouts of 10 seconds so it's on the slower side it doesn't matter as much for a scanning unit because you're generally going to have it powered up the whole night but yeah if you're driving along and you see something in the headlights and then you flick over that it does take a bit of time one thing that was really good in use the range finder is super consistent easy to get good ranges out of i'm swearing by running any thermal unit now with the laser range finder it makes everything so much easier uh, i was accurately getting readings out to about 940 meters with it when i was testing it so i was pretty pleased with that another thing that this unit features is geo positioning so it's able to track you via gps and you link that up with your phone on the um, hic micro app also able to put out a ping from the unit and that'll display on your app so if you shoot something you can then ping it and then follow your app and track over to exactly where it was you're not hunting around trying to search for it unfortunately i didn't get to test that out because of the way the app for this unit is set up it basically means that i've got to register the device to myself and i didn't want to do that with a device that i don't own but 
the way it reads and the way it looks in other videos, it looks like a good thing. But again, I didn't get to personally try it. So this style of unit's gonna suit someone with very particular needs to actually make use of all the additional features. So whether you're out scouting and you're trying to find a target stag on private property or that, they might have a place there. If you're cat culling on a property and they also own cats and you wanna make sure you don't shoot old Farmer Brown's pet, you might be able to see a collar with the night vision mode. But for myself, it's not something that I'd personally go and buy. For me, there's not enough advantages over having a straight thermal unit currently, at least where they are in this point in the technology. I think another couple of years in the future when they've got these refined a bit more, I think they'll be a really good unit then. But for my use, they're just not quite there yet. And just hold up a sec, I'll just go. Yeah. Okay, no, not vision socks. <laughs> Yep, go for it. <laughs> Shot. I think you should be able to just see the one on the right here sticking up. Do which one? Yep. 